Okay. Now, since there don't seem to be any more issues, uh, yeah, let's start the lecture. Okay, so is it Ganking 101? You might want to open the slides if you haven't yet. First off, uh, the slide number two is a quick class overview. I'm going to read it for everybody that doesn't have the slides open. First off, I'm going to introduce myself. That's going to happen in a few minutes. Uh, after that, I'll quickly talk about the basics of what is a suicide gang, so we know what we're talking about. Then I'm going to go over what makes a ship uh, an interesting gang target. I'm going to talk about uh, ways to not get ganked. I'm going to quickly go over how Concord works, which is the HiSec uh, police squad. I'm going to give you some numbers on how much damage su typical suicide ganking ships can do. I'm going to explain what the best thing to do is once you actually do get ganked, or if you do, it, do get ganked. I'm going to have example fits uh, comparing regular ships versus tanked ships, or rather regular fits versus tanked fits, so you can see the difference we're talking about here. After that, that, that's the part that's probably of interest to you if you're not interested in suicide ganking yourself whatsoever. After that, we're going to have a short part about the other side of suicide ganking, e.g. you doing the killing. I'm going to talk about the long-term consequences that a suicide ganker has to handle. I'm going to talk about the steps of how to successfully gank somebody. And again, I'm going to have example fits and explain what these fits are intended to do. After all of that, like I said, we're going to have the Q&A. Also, during the lecture, if you have any questions, if you'd like me to repeat something, please just type it in lecture.euni. After the Q&A, we're going to do the practical, where you actually get to suicide gang somebody. And that will conclude the class. Good. Teacher's introduction. My name's Titus Talang, as you will probably have figured by my character. Uh, I've been in the uni for about a year now. I've done suicide gangs for about half a year. In that time, I've killed approximately 20 billion ISK worth of mostly mining ships. I've participated in events such as Suicide Gang for Good, where we collect, uh, I think, about uh, 128 billion ISK for the Philippines. And overall, the reason I'm a teacher, I simply like to hold very long monologues explaining stuff to people. So I figured I might as well do it to more people and, well, thus I'm a university teacher. Well, then, uh, what is a suicide gang? Just to make sure we're on the same page here, a suicide gang is illegal aggression in high security space. That means if a war target comes up to you and kills you, that's not a suicide gang. They're allowed to shoot you. In the same way, if you're, for example, a suspect or you're an outlaw and anybody can shoot you, that's also not a suicide gang. A suicide gang, if you go up to somebody you're not allowed to shoot and shoot them regardless. If you suicide gang, it's not, it's not called the suicide gang for nothing. If you suicide gang, the ship you're in will always be destroyed by Concord. Period. If you find a way to evade destruction by Concord when you commit a criminal offense, such as a suicide gang, that is bannable, period. Also, in a suicide gang in high security space, combat will always be over within 25 seconds, because that is the time frame that it takes for a Concord squad to jam the attacker's ship in 0.5 security. All you need to do when getting ganked to survive is to live for 25 seconds. And that can be a very long time if you're being shot. Now, uh, on page, I think it's four on the class slides, there's a YouTube embed. For the people that don't have the class slides open, I'm going to paste the link. Just to give you a sense of time frame we're talking about here. That's a suicide gang against a Mackinac, which is a Tech 2 mining barge in point five security space. I'm the one doing the shooting. It's lightly tanked, but it's not properly tanked, and thus it dies. Otherwise, the link would really be relevant. Uh, it's also got the timer, so you can see how long 25 seconds is, approximately, when you're actually getting shot. 
And now I've got to get the link to paste it to you guys. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a YouTube link. Once again, since CCP is bad at stuff, this link does not work in the in-game browser. So once again, you'll need to copy it to the out-of-game browser to view it. Uh, I think the video is about two minutes long. So I'm going to give you that time now to view the video. And after that, we'll continue the class. All right, I'm going to assume that everybody's already finished the video by now. Uh, I realize that if you've been playing E for some time, you've probably seen a scenario like that. Uh, Mark, I will never take my mining barge to 0.5 again. Uh, I wouldn't say that, but I hope you'll never take an untanked mining barge to 0.5 belt again. Uh, Camellia asks, why did you orbit the target? I did not orbit the target. If you check the video again, it says keep at range. I kept the target at 750 meters because uh, small blasters, which is what my ship used, have an optimal of about 1.5 kilometers. Uh, 750 meters makes sure that I'm well within my optimal, but it also makes sure that I don't accidentally bump the target. If the target moves, uh, it's harder to hit it. Uh, Nuclear Moko asks, is Concord response time faster in 0.9 versus 0.5? Yes, 0.9 is way faster. And in a few slides, I'm going to actually have a table that shows response time. OK, uh, so let's continue. What makes a good ganking target? First off, uh, the most obvious, obvious answer. A good ganking target is something that gives you more ISK than you lose by ganking it. If, you're, if your ship explodes, approximately half of all modules you have fitted and approximately half of the contents of your cargo bay will drop and be lootable. That means that if half of your cargo is worth more than it takes for your attacker to kill you, he makes a profit. For example, if you take your Idoron, even if it's a properly tanked Idoron, it's still an Idoron, it only takes about give or take 50 million isk in ships to kill it. Even if you do that, and you say put 1 billion isk in cargo, and somebody scans you, chances are you're going to get ganked. Because if I have to use 50 million isk to kill you, and you have 1 billion isk in cargo, that means that the loot is going to be worth approximately 500 million, which makes, means the ganker makes 450 million in profit. So that's the most obvious kind of gank. The other kind, however, is a high kill value. Now, we're not talking about ganking for profit in this case, but we're talking about ganking for 
prestige, for killboard padding, whatever you want to call it. Of course, it depends on which side of the thing you're on. The target's probably going to call it, well, killboard padding. The ganker's going to call it prestige, whatever. But in this case, what matters is how much is you lose. For example, if you're in a pirate battleship that's worth one billion in Hall Alone, you're already an interesting target, especially if you're lightly tanked. Also, the ganker does not need to profit from the kill directly to profit from actually killing you. For example, you may or may not have encountered the guys that call themselves the New Order of Hisek. They're professional uh, minor bumpers and minor gankers. And while they don't profit from their kills, they profit from people donating to them. So they do their stuff. So they do ganks and do bumps and most importantly, they post the reactions to those ganks and bumps to the website and people donate. I think they've got around 160 billion ISK in donations over the last eight months. That is a lot of, uh, that is a lot of ganking ships. Uh, Camellia asks, always assuming you are the one who loots your wreck, uh, you use an alt account to likely scout for you. If you're ganking industrials, especially freighters, you will have dedicated setup to loot safely. Most likely for smaller cargo, you will uh, use a noob ship alt to drag the cargo from the wreck into an orca's ship bay that is publicly accessible to the fleet. Because uh, the pilot actually doing the looting, since uh, the target died to a suicide gank, that means that the wreck legally belongs to the guy that died, the target. Anybody else looting that wreck will go suspect, and everybody will be able to shoot them. Since you don't want that, at least not on the ship that's actually going to be carrying the cargo, what you do is you use an alt, in a noob ship to drag the loot into an orca's fleet hangar. That means the noob ship alt will go suspect and maybe die, but it doesn't matter since that's not holding the, 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 the drops. The drops are held in the orca, which can just dock up and have the cargo. So there's many methods to actually get that loot from your wreck fairly safely. And in most cases, since there's already a, a, a pilot on grid that's doing the scouting for you, or the bumping in case of freighter gangs. We'll get to that later. Uh, it's most most very, very likely that you will actually get your loot. Uh, question by Nib Nibbler. Also, what are bumps? What are bumps? A bump is when somebody uh, flies their ship into somebody else's ship. What happens in EVE is that, as opposed to what you might think, the ships don't actually take damage. But instead, they bump off each other. How far they bump depends on the weight of the ship and the speed of the ship. For example, uh, the New Order that I mentioned, they use mostly stabbers for bumping with a micro warp drive. The stabbers are cruisers that can go very fast with a micro warp drive. And what they do is they point their ship at your mining barge, turn on the micro warp drive, and fly at maximum speed. They impact your ship. Your, their ship gets bounced, your ship gets bounced, and your ship gets kicked out of uh, mining laser range. And then you need to slow boat back, and while you slow boat back, they can just bump you again as long as they like. That doesn't count as aggression, so that's not actually suicide ganking. It's not really relevant to the class, but I felt I should explain that. Uh, Rand Alastair asks, do you need three accounts for a safe setup, a ganker, a looter, and a storage? That depends on who you're ganking. If you're ganking a freighter, for example, you will likely be ganking in a team anyway. And the looter account can be a trial account. So that's not really the issue. Do you want an orca on a different account? Yes, probably. Even if you're doing minor ganking, what I do. Uh, apart from that, your scout can be the looter. For example, for me, I use my scout for looting. Why? Because in a mining belt, you're likely alone with your target. That means if your uh, scout loots and goes suspect, they can simply warp off because nobody else is around to actually shoot them. They can just loot the wreck and warp to station and dock up and wait for the suspect timer to expire. Uh, I think that's all the questions.
that I, I hope I didn't miss any. Please repeat your question if I missed them. Uh, also, what makes you a ganking target is uh, obviously by making the ganker actually aware that you might be a ganking target. And the most obvious one is being in a ship that is known to be squishy. For example, the high yield mining barges, that is the Coveter and the Hulk, have, like I said, high yield, but very low tank. They have very low amount of slots that you can use for tank, and they die easily in almost any case. If I see a Hulk sitting in a belt, you bet I'm gonna scan it. I know that these are high value targets, and I know that these are very easy to kill. Also known squishy ships are mission running strategic cruisers, Tech 3 cruisers, the Tengu for example. Those have uh, usually have an active tank, shield booster, which hardly helps at all against the suicide gank. We'll talk about that later. And uh, usually also have a very high uh, amount of ISK invested in the modules. Uh, Lafleur asks, does scouts use passive targeting? Yes. Well, it depends. Uh, if I'm ganking miners, for example, I will definitely use passive targeting. Because, well, if you're sitting in a belt and somebody locks you up, it's probably a good hint that they're trying to kill you. If you're ganking a freighter, yeah, probably passive targeting. If you're ganking mission runners, it depends. There is no real cost to using passive targeting on a scout ship, so it's usually used, yes. Uh, if you flip to the next page, ways to prevent a suicide gank is what we're going to talk about here. First off, something I sadly see a lot is shield boosters or arm repairers on mining barges. A shield booster or an armor repairer, I'm going to have some numbers on this later, uh, are not a way to prevent a gank. The problem is that active tanking is designed to regenerate a lot of health over a long period of time. Like I said earlier, a gank is over in 25 seconds maximum. Over 25 seconds, the repair amount from an armor repairer or a shield booster is very insignificant. You want to buffer tank your ship, which means increase the uh, maximize the raw effective health your ship has. That means, for example, shield extenders, that means armor plating, and also resistance mods, adaptive vulnerability fields, energized adaptive nanomembranes, what have you. Also, in uh, especially in low EHP mission builds. Battleships aren't that at risk because they have a very large amount of inherent health just because they're battleships. The strategic cruisers I mentioned earlier don't have that. They're very squishy. We'll have example fits on that later. They can be fit to be very tanky. And when you're missioning, at least when you're traveling to a mission, they should be fit to be tanky if you don't want to be at risk of simply getting ganked when you undock from a station or when you jump through a gate or whatever. You want to fit as much passive tank, that means shield extenders and resistance mods, on your travel fit as possible. And also something that I've recently discovered, since it's only been recently added, in Rubicon we got mobile depots. Those are things that uh, allow you to refit your ship in space, similar to an Orca. That means you can keep your missioning fit that you will use for the actual mission in cargo hold, jump to the target system, use a mobile depot to refit to your missioning fit, run the mission, refit back to travel fit, and return to your agent. That minimizes the risk of you actually getting ganked. Also, uh, static ops like to employ anti-gank protection, especially mining operations in lower security space. That means lower high security space, so for example, 0.6 or 0.5, like to employ uh, static protection. The problem is that many people believe that damage is a good way to prevent a suicide gank. It's not. A ganker will be likely flying a catalyst, which is a destroyer, which means it's a very small target, it's rather hard to hit, and it's also rather fast. That means that your damage ship actually needs to hit the catalyst. There are some damage ships that can do this, yes, but what is far better at preventing suicide ganks and what should be used is ECM, 
ECM is short for electronic countermeasure, and it's effectively a module that can be used to deactivate your target's uh, targeting systems. So if you use an ECM module on a ganker and it succeeds, the ganker will be unable to target and thus unable to shoot anybody for 10 seconds. Like I said earlier, a gank lasts 25 seconds. If you only land a single jam, that's almost half, half the damage that ganker would have done that you just negated. It's one of the most effective ways to prevent a mining fleet from actually getting ganked, or a single miner in your fleet from getting ganked. What needs to be said is that this ECM boat needs to have a high scan resolution, which means it targets stuff fast. Like I said, a catalyst is a rather small ship. If you get a target lock in 10 seconds, by 10 seconds, your ship might be dead. High scan resolution and the ship itself needs to be tanked too, of course. Otherwise, the ganker could just kill the ECM ship. Now, if you flip to the next page, that's what, what the question was with uh, security level. Concord is what will kill the ganker in high security space. Concord is a police squad, but uh, that word is very, used very liberal, uh, liberally because Concord will only engage after the criminal commits the act. That means once the criminal shoots the target, or the ganker shoots the whatever he's shooting, the timer starts for Concord to respond, and after that time, the criminal will get uh, jammed, nuded, webbed, scrammed, everything, uh, be unable to do anything, and a few seconds later, his ship explodes. The second the jam lands, the gank is, eff uh, is effectively over. Now, if you have the class slides open, there's a table that shows uh, time in seconds for each security level. There's two rows, uh, prepared and fresh. We're going to talk about these later. For now, all that you need to know is that a ganker will likely have prepared Concord beforehand, and thus the top rule will likely apply. Uh, if you flip to the next slide, uh, damage numbers. That's just a quick table uh, that will show you how much damage uh, that type of ganking ship can do. A catalyst and a thrasher, that's the top five rows in different fittings, are destroyer class ships that I mentioned earlier. Those are rather cheap. For example, a full T2 fit costs uh, below 10 million isk. A T1 fit costs maybe 3 million isk, and do respectable amount of damage for their small uh, price. They also have a very small skill requirement. For example, if you're participating in the practical, you'll likely uh, be using a catalyst or a thrasher, since those are the fits I recommended, uh, because those are very easy to train into. That means making a suicide ganking alt that can gank some targets is better easier, rather easy especially if you're operating in fleets. The bottom two rows are the Talos and the Tornado. These two are attack battlecruisers. As the name implies, they're battlecruiser-sized hulls. They take large, a longer time to train into, and they're also noticeably, noticeably more expensive. A Talos and a Tornado in ganking fit cost about 100 million isk. Contrast that with a destroyer that costs below 10 million isk and then compare the damage numbers. Uh, Talos does about 2.5 times as much damage as a Tech 2 Catalyst at 10 times the price. So if you have the pilots, you're going to be using Catalysts. Taloses are things that you use for ganking freighters, that you use for ganking orcas, large targets, heavy targets. Uh, Catalyst and Thrasher are the typical ganking ships that you'll likely see. Also of note, there's a difference between DPS and Alpha. If you've been playing for uh, some time, you'll likely be familiar with the terms, but I'm going to explain them regardless. DPS it means damage per second, which means that these ships are focused on doing as much damage over time as possible. In this case, the catalyst tries to do as much damage during 25 seconds as possible. On the other hand, alpha, which is the right column, means the amount of damage you can do in a single shot. As you can obviously see, the tornado is a master of this. Alpha ships are used to kill mission runners. Why? Because a mission runner will likely be ganked on a Stargate 
or on a station. Both of these have static guns that can protect anybody being aggressed. And these guns will almost insta-kill anybody. At least in a ganking ship. Battleships, okay, you can you can tank uh, gate guns in a battleship or a battlecruiser if it's properly tanked, but those aren't good at ganking. So what's gonna what what is used is tornadoes that they simply can kill the target in a single salvo from the ganking ships. Also, uh, alpha damage obviously since it's dealt in a single shot completely ignores any repairers on the target. They simply go from a hundred percent health to dead in a single salvo. If you're interested in the concept uh, and you're in the uni, Kothanas tends to take out alpha dog fleets with similar setup that aim to kill uh, suspects in trade hubs that play station games and try to simply active tank against anybody that shoots them by simply applying enough alpha to kill them in one shot. If you're interested in that, go check those fleets out. Now, the next slide are the numbers that I promised on tanking against the gang. First off, restating Effective hit point buffer is what matters. You want to survive as much damage as possible outright. You don't want to rely on shield boosters. Why? If you are seeing the slides, there's numbers. A tech to large shield extender gives you at maximum skills 3,281 3, health before resistances. A tech to X large shield booster, which is far harder to fit than a shield extender, gives you 2,700 HP if you manage to cycle it the millisecond you get shot for the entirety of the 25 seconds of a suicide gang. Just, just to give you a comparison, the shield extender is far easier to fit and gives you more health than a perfect scenario for a shield booster of a larger size. Uh, the same numbers below for the large shield booster and the medium shield extender. For example, the large shield booster, which is the same fitting requirements approximately as a large shield extender, has one third of the effect and just barely more than a medium shield extender. Uh, for armor, the, the numbers are even worse. Uh, 1600 millimeter plate will give you 6,000 uh, 6, HP. An 800 millimeter plate gives you 3,000 HP. And the largest kind of armor repairer, which is a tech to a large armor repairer, will give you 1,840 HP, assuming that you are taking armor damage from second 1 to second 25 and manage to perfectly cycle the module. Obviously, since you're going to be taking shield damage first, that's not a feasible scenario, but I assume the best case, just to show the ridiculous difference when it comes to defending against the suicide gang. Overall, it can be said, uh, comments on ancillary shield booster fits. Ancillary shield boosters over a single cycle are approximately the same amount of health as a shield extender of the same size. Ancillary shield boosters are on unbonus chips, only worth it uh, if you manage to cycle more than one reload. And in a suicide gank, you're obviously not going to get more than one reload. So Ansel boosters um, are not really good against suicide ganks. They're obviously better than the regular shield boosters, but uh, shield extender also prevents against uh, alpha, obviously. A shield booster is not going to uh, protect you against alpha. So uh, full buffer tank uh, for anti-ganking. That especially includes mining barges. I see way too many mining barges with shield boosters fit. Those aren't going to do you any good. Uh, I think the Machino that was in the YouTube video actually had a shield booster. I'm not sure. I'd have to look up the kill. Them. Okay. Uh, just to illustrate the numbers difference here. Now, on the next slide, you have what you should do if it actually happens that you do get suicide. Gang. Now, obviously, a uh, very important thing that many people don't realize if you're at a station, and you haven't shot anybody, you can always dock up. Even if you're getting shot, you can still dock up as, soon, as long as you haven't shot back. That means if you actually do get ganked on a station, and you're still in docking range, you can simply dock up in the station and be safe. Also, uh, 
if you have overheating trained, thermodynamics trained is the skill, uh, you should overheat your modules. I'm not going to go in-depth uh, on overheating here, since that's a separate class. I'm just going to say overheating means that you increase the effect of your modules for a short amount of time. Also, a uh, very important thing, if you're mining and you have an orca in fleet that is next to you, the orca has a ship maintenance bay where you can store ships as long as they do not have anything in their cargo hold. That means if you get ganked in a mining barge and you do not shoot them back, that means you should turn your drones to passive, since otherwise drones are going to shoot back automatically, uh, and you do get ganked, you can simply uh, somehow get rid of the ore, either jet can it or put it in the orca, uh, and then just store your ship in the orca's ship maintenance bay. This is a 100% surefire way to save your ship. To the degree that if there, if a pot, potential gank target is sitting next to an orca, I'm not even going to bother. If the ganker shoots you and you store your ship, they still lose their ship because they still aggress you. Concord is still going to kill them. But you don't lose your ship because it's in the orca and it can't be shot there. It's, it's in cargo. And you can just warp your pot away. Also, uh, if you're in a faster ship, mining barges, it's not going to matter. Unless you're in a skiff. Skiffs are pretty fast, especially if they have afterburner fit. Uh, other binding barges is not going to happen. You're too slow. Faster ships, you can move sideways. That's important. If you move away from the ganker, then their guns can still perfectly track you, and the ganking ship is going to be faster. If you move sideways, that makes it harder for the guns to track you. If you're moving fast enough, you might take less damage than you would have taken if you were sitting still. In most cases, it's, to be honest, it's not going to make a difference. But it might make a difference, so it's worth trying. Also, I need to emphasize the importance of staying calm. That's why it's uh, on the slide three times. Stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. If you're getting shot, chances are you're going to die, because usually a ganker... At least experienced gankers will not attempt to engage you if, it, if you have a chance of surviving. Uh, however, you can still save your pod. You probably have implants of some sort, and you probably don't want to lose those. What often happens is that the gank target panics and doesn't do the right thing, which is saving their pod. They probably can't save their ship. They can still always save their pod. Why? because a pod instantly warps. That's something that no other ship can do in EVE. The pod instantly enters warp. That means if you're getting killed, uh, you should always select something on your overview that is warpable. Can be a planet, can be a moon, can be a station, can be an asteroid belt, whatever. It just needs to be warpable. And then you simply spam the warp to button on the overview, or on the selected item window, rather. What's going to happen is your ship's going to die. That's unavoidable at that point. The ship's going to die, your pod's going to get ejected, and since you're spamming the warp 2 button, the pod is instantly going to warp away before anything can lock it. It's a 100% surefire way to not lose your pod in high set. Only exception is smart bombs. Since smart bombs don't need to, need to lock you, they can still kill you before you can warp. But smart bombs typically aren't used in ganking. Now, maybe some, somebody's going to link that uh, suicide gank that happened a few weeks back where a fleet of, I think, 50 Machinaws or so got smart bombed. Unless you're in a fleet of 50 Machinaws, you're not going to get smart bombed. <laughs> it's that simple. Smart bombs aren't going to happen. So in most cases, you will be able to save your pod as long as you stay calm and warp it out. Uh, Camellia, is not selecting a destination using autopilot faster to save your pod. That depends. The problem is the autopilot will, as far as I'm aware, not try to warp as long as you're warp scrambled. That means that your pod gets ejected, and one server tick later, the server tells your client that you're no longer warp scrambled. And at that tick, the autopilot sends the warp to command. That's one tick later than if you spam warp to Y, 
because if you spam warp2, the client continually sends warp requests to the server. And as soon as your pod gets ejected, before your client actually knows that you're no longer scrammed, the server knows you're no longer scrammed, and the next warp2 request is honored and you warp out. So you actually warp out one tick earlier if you manually spam warp2. Uh, one tick is usually not enough for a ganker to kill your pod, but it might be. It depends on how they fit. Personally, I recommend warp2. You can use the autopilot if you wish. Uh, I'm, I have to admit that I haven't actually done too many experiments on the autopilot for this purpose. Okay, uh, you can do both, yes. If you autopilot destination somewhere and spam warp, the faster it's going to happen, ultimately. It can't hurt. Uh, now, next up is a few slides displaying example fits. For this, I, if you don't have the slides up, I'm still going to try to give you the most important numbers that are visible. Uh, first off, the example that I love to use for squishy uh, missioning ships is a Tango. It's a Kaldari strategy cruiser that is frequently used to run level 4 missions rather quickly. The fit that you see here, I'm going to state this for the uh, benefit of everybody that doesn't have the slides open. The fit you see here has 15,000 effective health against uh, projectile ammo, fusion projectile ammo. Uh, the fit shown has an afterburner, it has two target painters, it has a small shield booster, and it has uh, two resistance modules. It's got the ballistic controls and heavy missile launchers. It's a pretty standard missioning tango fit that you'll frequently see in high set. It's got 15,000 EHP. If you flip back to the page with uh, tornado de uh, alpha damage, you'll see a, a single tornado hitting perfectly. That's not going to happen against a cruiser, but a single tornado perfectly hitting deals 12,000 damage. The tango's got 15,000 EHP. Of course, not 100% of the tornado's deep damage is probably going to get applied because the tornado has battleship sized guns. But you can safely say if you use four tornadoes, against this Tengu. Three would probably be enough, but it's better not to risk it. If you use four tornadoes on this, it's going to die. And uh, you probably can't see the price if you have, don't have the slides open. Uh, EFT shows a price of 1.3 billion for the ship. That's mostly the small shield booster and the afterburner, all of which can drop because they're fitted modules. And the tornadoes don't cost that much. And this is a fairly low amount of uh, shininess on a missioning tango fit. There's far worse cases uh, than this. Now, uh, on the next slide, you have the same tango. It's got the same subsystems. It's got the same rigs, since you don't want to change rigs every time. Uh, but it has buffer tank. For everybody that doesn't have the slides open, this one shows 89,000 uh, EHP against the same uh, fusion ammo. The difference, it has triple large shield extenders in the mid slots. It uses uh, an additional explosive deflection field to make sure it doesn't have a resistance hole that the tornadoes could be used. And it uses a damage control. And it uses three power diagnostic systems because those actually increase your shield hit points. Uh, if you compare the two HP pools, this one has. Uh, Three, six times? Six times the EHP that the regular missioning Tengu has, while having approximately the same value, because all the traveling mods I use in this fit purposefully are Tech 2 mods. There's no faction anything on there, so you don't actually increase the price of your ship by using this. And it makes you six times as hard to gank, meaning you're approximately six times less likely to lose your ship. Just, just to illustrate the incredible difference that buffer tanking versus active tanking your ship makes in this scenario. Of course, the tank was selected for a reason because it's a very apparent example, and it's a very drastic example because it's a strategy cruiser, which means it has a very low base hit point pool. Battleship examples aren't going to be as drastic, I have to admit that, but they're still going to be noticeable. Now, on the next slide, you have a pet peeve of mine, which is the Orca. Known as the most popular mining support ship in HiSec, 
and noticeable for having most of its base hit point pool be in structure. You'll rarely see this on a ship. Most ships have their HP either in shield or in armor. The Orca has most of its hit point pool in structure. And on the slide you will see something that I sadly see very frequently. That is cargo expanders and cargo rigs on an Orca. Cargo expanders and cargo rigs have in common that they decrease your structure HP. In this case, I assume the best case scenario for cargo orcas. I've seen worse. In this case, I assume that it's actually properly shield tanked in the mid slots. This gives this orca 97,000 HP. That's still a lot. I mean, that's very much compared to others, unless you realize that this orca is worth about 700 million isk. It's an expensive ship. Minor gankers will kill orcas, even if it's not profitable for them. If they have the people to do it, they will probably do it. Uh, why? Because, well, uh, I, I like going back to my New Order example. Orca kills are shiny, and orca kills often generate shiny pods, because orca pilots tend to be rather wealthy, and thus fly wealthy pods. And Orca pilots also tend to generate tears. That's something that needs to be taken into consideration when you kill them. They're fairly likely to generate a, a, a rather, rather large amount of tears. And, well, tears get you donations. It's that simple. They're amusing for some people. And thus, some people will pay you to procure them. Now, on the next slide, you see a Orca that is properly tipped. It has no cargo expanders, because those don't even affect the ore hole. It has a damage control module, because the damage control module gives you 60% resistances on your structure, which, as I mentioned, is where most of the Orca's HP is. It also uses a module that you don't frequently see otherwise, uh, reinforced bulkheads, which is a percentage increase to your structure HP. Like I said, Orca, most HP in structure, percentage increase is good. It's got the same uh, mid slots that the previous fit had, and it's got core defense field extender rigs that increase your shield by a percentage. And a difference in the high slots, if you compare the two fits, is that on this fit, it's not a requirement, but it's a recommendation. I sacked the mining foreman harvester capacitor link, which decreases the capacity usage of mining lasers. Of course, if that makes your miner's cap unstable, that's not a good thing. But if it doesn't, uh, it's, which often is the case, it's very useful to have a Siege Warfer shield harmonizing link in there, which increases the shield resistances of your gang members. Why is this a good thing? Well, obviously it increases their EHP, but also many unexperienced gankers will not scan the orca that is supporting the mining barge. They will scan the mining barge, then select a ship that can just barely kill the mining barge to save money, and then the mining barge will live. Why? Because it had an orca that increased its EHP further, which the ganker did not expect. So a shield link is a good thing on an orca. Next up, because I always talk about mining barges, sorry about that, it's my, exp my field of expertise when it comes to ganking, so I like to do barge examples. Uh, Next up is a Retriever, known as pretty much the go-to mining barge in high sec. sadly. The Retriever has a rather hard, large ore hold compared to its brothers, and it's also very, very squishy. This one's the go-to standard mining Retriever that you see in high sec. If you're not seeing the slides, it's got two uh, mining lasers, obviously. It's got a survey scanner to scan rocks, and it's got tri triplicate mining laser upgrades to increase mining yield. It's also got a CPU rig because uh, mining lasers take a lot of CPU. You can't fit them otherwise. This one, uh, these all show EHP against the antimatter damage profile, since I'm assuming that catalysts are going to be used. Now, this retriever shows 9,700 EHP. That means it dies to a 5 million isk uh, 
meta, meta level three catalyst fit. You can cross reference that with a with the table if you'd like the DPS table. It had a meta three catalyst. Multiply that number by twenty five, and you get the damage output in point three uh, in, in point five. That dies to a meta three catalyst in point five, and dies to a tech two catalyst in point six and point seven. On the next slide, you'll actually not notice a large EHP jump. I mean, it's still large, but it's not noticeably large. I added a damage control too. I added an adaptive and vulnerability field, and I added two core defense field extender rings. And the EHP changes from the 9,000 it had earlier to 18,000 18, it has now. Now that's not still not much by any means, but it's an important threshold because uh, a Tech 2 catalyst does approximately 18,000 damage over 25 seconds in, high, uh, in 0.5. That retriever fit has 18,800 EHP. That means that even assuming perfect skills, overheat, implants, everything, all it takes is a slightly botched warp in or a single glancing blow for this retriever to survive a catalyst gag. To be honest, that's probably enough to make most solo gankers not care. So that's why this retriever is actually a noticeable increase in safety over the previous fit. It still dies to a single catalyst, maybe. It definitely dies to two catalysts. So against coordinated ganks, it's not safety. Which is why on the next slide, I've got a Procurer. A Procurer is also a mining barge. It's also a Tech 1 mining barge, which, has, which means it has the same skill requirements that the Retriever had. But it noticeably, uh, in this fit, has 80,000 80, EHP as compared to the 18,000 EHP that the Retriever had, even Tech. It has a damage control, it has a mining laser upgrade, it has a survey scanner. This one can actually fit the survey scanner and still be tanked, as opposed to the retriever previously. It has double adaptive invulns, it has a medium shield extender, it's got a mining laser, it's got tank rigs. You may, you may say, well, it's only got a single mining laser. Actually, uh, the retriever and the procurer work in that the retriever's two mining lasers are the same as three effective mining lasers due to a real bonus. And the procurer's single mining laser is also equal to three mining lasers due to a real bonus. So that's actually just makes it easier to fit. It doesn't actually decrease yield. The decrease in yield, if you compare it to the retriever from previously, means that uh, it only it comes from the fact that it can only fit a single mining laser upgrade as opposed to two. This one yields approximately 1.1 thousand cubic meters of ore per minute. The retriever previously had had 1,150. So it's a give or take 6%, 5% yield difference. Like I said earlier, the tank retriever had 18,000 HP, and this one has 80,000 HP. That's approximately four times as much, and it's cheaper. I've honestly only ever seen which, uh, procurers or skiffs ganked if there was some outside reason. For example, uh, if you've been playing it for some time, you probably noticed Plex for Good one or two weeks ago, where we uh, the EVE community collected and donated Plex. That CCP then turned to donations to the Red Cross for the Philippines. And the suicide ganking community ran suicide gank for good, where we live streamed suicide ganking, and got donations for that. Uh, and that's the only time in the last ten months that I've actually seen a procurer or a skiff get suicide ganked. Because if you have a community of twenty gankers that are waiting for a target, you can drop pretty much anything in a few seconds, even a procurer, even a skiff. Take some time, but it still dies. Uh, but that doesn't fall under proper tanking. That just falls under, you might want to be aware that there's 20 suicide gankers doing an event two jumps from you. And it might not be wise to go mining, maybe. So of course, there's no perfect safety in high sec. Let, let me emphasize that. There's no perfect safety in high sec. This is, this is if, if you undock your ship, you can lose it. I mean, unless you're Kriba and you have the Veldnaut, which has 
some few million EHP, that's probably not going to get suicide ganked. For everybody else, uh, there's no perfect safety in HiSec. You can just get as safe as possible. Aprocore is, as far as Tech 1 mining barges go, as safe as possible. It's highly unlikely that that thing gets ganked. On the next page, we switch to Tech 2 barges. Those have a very much higher skill investment. Those have higher yield, obviously, and a very noticeably higher price tag. Uh, this skiff fit is the max tag skiff. This skiff has 122,000 EHP against antimatter compared to the 80,000 that the procurer had. That's a 50% increase. Uh, however, you also increase your price tag by about 10 times. It also brings with it higher yield, brings with it slightly higher speed. It brings with it a higher, uh, a larger ore bay. So it's still an upgrade. If you want to go by the numbers, it's obviously a far higher price too. Those things are extremely unlikely to get ganked because of their raw EHP. Ironically, they are actually more likely to get ganked than a procurer because they're also more expensive. Uh, now on the next slide, you have the same skiff, except the difference is this one actually uses an ancillary uh, current router rig, which gives it more power grid, and then uses that power grid to fit a 10 meganewton microwave drive. Uh, Afterburn, sorry. Uh, the difference being that the skiff, as opposed to all other mining barges, is actually fast enough to abuse an afterburner properly. If you fly a skiff with this afterburner, assuming you're not seeing the slides again, you go 644 meters per second. And that's noticeable because ganking catalysts go approximately 450. And also, by the time that it, it essentially makes it harder for the gankers to warp on top of you. Of course, if they're sitting still and they warp to you, they'll still land on top of you because you're sitting still. If uh, you're moving, easiest way, just orbit the, the asteroid you're mining or orbit the warping point or orbit whatever, orbit an orca, orbit anything. Orbit a, a, a can that you jettison, that's easy. Orbit anything, keep moving. If you can't warp to you, by the time they land on grid, you're actually going to be further than you've been before because you're orbiting. And given the warp speeds of a destroyer, that can be between 5 and 10 kilometers. And destroyers have an optimal range of give or take 2 to 3 kilometers, maybe. That's far out of the optimal, which means that the gankers actually need to invest time to get a scout in your orbit path so that the gankers can warp to that scout and then land on top of you where you're going to be when they land. It's not a perfect safety thing, but it's something that is useful at discouraging ganks because it increases the amount of effort required to gank you. Also, uh, like I said, you move faster than the average ganking catalyst. That means they need to fit afterburners. They need to properly approach you so they don't go out of range during the gank. And given that this, this skiff still has 100,000 EHP and takes a bunch of catalysts to kill, somewhere around 14 or 15 in 0.5, all it takes is one or two gankers to mess up that approach and not do damage properly. and uh, you live, and they just lost 18 catalysts. That's still a nice dent in the wallet. So that's why the afterburner on a skiff is actually viable, I'd say. Now, if you're reading the slides, you may notice that there is actually no uh, other Tech 2 mining barges, the Hulk and the Magnum out there. The Hulk is very easy to exclude. A tanked Hulk has the same EHP as a tanked Retriever at about eight times the price. If I see a Hulk, I'm going to kill it because I know I can kill a Hulk at 0.5, no matter what the fit is. Mackinac is, well, 
A Machina can be tanked to survive a solo ganker. It's essentially a tactical version of a retriever. However, given its price tag, the Machina is also about 170 to 200 million ISK. Given its price tag, it's still rather likely that you're going to attract gankers in a Machina. It's not as guaranteed as a Hulk, because most solo gankers that are serious about it are trained enough to kill a Hulk solo in 0.5. Uh, but it's still rather likely given your price tag. I'm not completely against using Machinas in 0.5, but it's risky. Obviously, all, all these advices apply to 0 0.5, 0 0.6, to some degree 0.7 security space. In 0.8 and 0.9, Concord response time is fast enough that a properly tanked Machina can probably survive more catalysts than it's actually co actually cost. Uh, Hulk, I'm not sure. I wouldn't use Hulk in 0.8 either. But in 0.5 or 0.6 security, using a Hulk is almost suicide as soon as a ganker sees you. Uh, now, I'm not covering Hall of Fits versus Alpha Tech 3 Battlecruisers. Tankability on, re uh, on different races. I'll have to go ahead and admit that I haven't done any EFT work on the new haulers. Sorry. What I can tell you is, as far as I'm aware, the average EHP of a EHP focus hauler has been rebalanced to be approximately the previous EHP of an Iteron Mark V. The Iteron Mark V, when tanked properly, was approximately tanky enough to take 200, uh, uh, 50 million ISK worth of ships. Thrashers mostly, because you want to alpha gank it. Thrashers to kill using alpha. That means that 100 million was approximately the rule of thumb for how much cargo you can safely haul at one of those. As far as for 40 new industrials, I have to admit that I haven't done EFT on those. I'm not sure what the EHP is looking like. I can do EHP in, uh, EFT on those, and I'll do EFT on those, promise. I'm going to post the results in the class thread as soon as I have them. You can get somewhere between 20 and 30k HP on a single. Oh, let me check against the numbers. Assuming that those numbers are good, uh, 20 to 30k HP. That's two NATOs. Since a uh, industrial has a high amount of high signature, that means uh, NATOs can do full damage. That means two NATOs can kill you. Alternately, ten thrashers. 10 Thrashers is uh, one, 100 million ISK. If those numbers are good, you can maybe safely haul 200 million ISK. Assuming your max tank fit. You can haul 200 million ISK rather safely. D don't quote me on that, please. Like, go going off the 20 to 30k HP that was stated in lecture, that's approximately the safety line that you don't want to cross. Beyond that, it's freighters. For freighters, the safety line is approximately 1 billion ISK because it takes five taloses to kill a freighter. A freighter can't tank, since a freighter doesn't have any modules it can fit. So for freighters, that baseline goes. One billion is probably the top amount you can hold safely. 1.1 billion probably isn't going to get you killed. But the freighter is hauling 20 billion that I've seen killed had it come. Uh, now, those example fits pretty much conclude the lawful part of our class. I'm putting that in figurative quotes. After this, we're going to talk about stuff that mostly concerns suicide gankers. There's still going to be some interesting tidbits for uh, non-gankers. And there's still going to be the Q&A afterwards. So if you think you're ne never ever going to suicide gank, feel free to still listen. In. It's not restricted by any way. But this is all the part that concerns defending against gangs, for now. I'm now going to switch to the long-term consequences that a suicide ganker faces in high sec. And those uh, are that every time you commit a criminal action, that means aggressing illegally, killing illegally, and podding illegally. 
your, your security status will decrease. Of note is that if a target actually aggresses you back, meaning uh, drones are aggressive, stuff like that, if they aggress you back, you won't lose security status for the kill or the potting, since you, at that time you'll be engaging illegally, since they shot you. Engagement is always a security status loss of it, uh, a suicide gang. Now, the lower your, suicide, uh, your, your, your security status gets, the harsher the penalties you face are. As your security status drops, Faction NPCs will spawn in high security space to defend you, or defend you, defend against you. Meaning, as after a certain amount of time on grid, depending on uh, security status of the system, Navy NPCs will attack you. Similar to Concord, except Navy NPCs are noticeably weaker than Concord. They will still web you, but they won't immediately scrap you. That means you can move rather safely in most ships if they're not battleship class as long as you don't go below minus five uh if you're reading the class slides the thresholds for the different security status uh, statuses uh, and system securities are on there of note is that as soon as you drop to negative five or below security status you're an outlaw that means essentially that you're permanently a suspect and that means that Anybody, anywhere, can legally shoot you. If you jump your catalyst through a gate, somebody can point you in fact, and police will kill you. And they're not going to get blown up because you're an outlaw. If you've been on Unifleet to LOSEC before, the perma flashes that you can legally engage anytime, those have below minus five security status. That's where they're perma flashing. Uh, also, Whenever you commit a criminal action, that means aggression in high sec or potting in low sec. The target of that action, meaning the guy you shot, gets a kill right against you. And now, this is something that I cannot state enough. A kill right is something whose importance or its importance is frequently, frequently overstated. Why a kill right, what it does, is it can be activated, it can be made available to others to activate it for free, for a price, depends. And those people can activate it, and then the target of the kill right, meaning the criminal, the previous criminal, gets a suspect flag immediately for 15 minutes. That means anybody can shoot them. Kill right lasts until somebody kills them after a kill right has been activated. Now, as you may notice, I said it, it makes them suspect. If you're below minus five security status, you're permanently a suspect. That means that effectively against a dedicated suicide ganking alt that is designed to operate at negative 10 security, a kill right is completely and utterly worthless. It makes them attackable to anyone, but they're already attackable to anyone. It's useless in that regard. Also, that something that's not in the class slides, but that I need to mention at this point, bounties do almost nothing. Why? A bounty payout is calculated based on the value of the destroyed ship. Now, as I mentioned earlier, ganking ships are cheap. They're designed to be cheap. They're expendable. If I lose a 5 million catalyst, that means that the miner, if they shot me back, gets approximately 300,000 disk of my bounty. That's a negligible amount, amount I'd say. So a bounty's not really a good way to retaliate against suicide gangs, let's put it that way. Uh, now, the next slide is how to gank somebody, but I'm going to skip that for now. I'm going to move to the uh, slide after that, which is the, logis the, the logistics of ganking. Um, not talking about the in-game role of logistics, which is repairing stuff, but about the logistics as in moving stuff. Now, like I said, if your suicide gank alt is designed to operate at negative 10 security, that means that they're permanently an outlaw, and that means they can't really safely move their ships around, since anybody can just point them, and they'll die to faction police. It's not a good idea. So, uh, what typically happens is that you're, uh, you buy your suicide ganking ships in bulk 
and then you somehow move them to where you base. You probably don't want to base in the trade hub because a lots of people gank in tra near trade hubs, and b it tends to be gang uh, camped rather heavily by rather fast talking ships, making your window of mistakes rather slim. So trade hubs not a good idea. How to get your stuff to where you gank from? The easiest way is to have a character doesn't need to be an alt that can fly an orca and that can simply haul the hulls to where you need them. The second option obviously is freight services, public freight services, Red Frog for example or Xpush. Those uh, allow you to set up courier contracts with them at rather cheap prices and they will uh, after some delay when a pilot gets around to it haul your stuff to where you want to. That's an option, but it the the cost adds up over time. Also, uh, very important is what I briefly touched upon earlier: preparing Concord. If you remember the Concord response time slide that we had, it had two rows: it had fresh and prepared, with a prepared time being noticeably longer, approximately five seconds. The difference is in how Concord squads respond. When a criminal action occurs, if there is already a Concord squad in system that is not currently active, that means not currently responding to anybody, that Concord squad will quote warp unquote. Important, this is not an actual warp. They simply despawn and respawn. They don't actually warp. But the lore wise explanation is that they warp. They disappear and then reappear with a slight delay. That's where the difference comes from. The fresh time is what happens the first time somebody commits a criminal offense in that system since downtime. The prepared time is what happens afterwards. If there's no Concord Squad currently on grid, but there is a Concord Squad in system. Now, obviously, if you're suicide ganking, you want a Concord Squad to be in system because that makes the response time long, which means you do more damage. Now what you do is you undock uh, uh, do Concord squads never respond is being asked. Concord squads despawn at downtown. At the, uh, at the daily server restart at noon is when Concord squads respawn. That means the first time you start ganking after downtown, you need to prepare Concord if you want it prepared. Alternatively, you can just overkill the first target a cord for uh, 20 seconds of time in point five, for example, and then that spawn concord that. Now, obviously, you want prepared concord in most cases. The way you prepare concord efficiently is you commit a criminal offense, obviously, in a noob ship. One of those free noob ships you get whenever you dock at a station where you don't have ships. Committing a criminal offense, well, you can be very blunt. You can just simply randomly shoot somebody. You can also shoot a poker. You can, I think, shoot a station. I'm not sure. Can you shoot stations? I've never tried that. I've always shot pokers. Uh, your example fits don't include ammo amount. Uh, I guess I include no more ammo than max cycles before concording that system. Yes. Uh, if you were open the fitted EFT, uh, newer EFT versions allow you to set a time uh, that the ammo lasts. Make sure you've got the overheat uh, ticked in the EFT box and then check how much ammo you use for 25 seconds of firing. Actually, we're going to be in Aldrad, so it's uh, tw uh, 15 seconds of firing since we don't have prepared Concord. It's 15 seconds. Uh, for my ganking, uh, it depends on the skills that your alt has, obviously, or your ganking character has. For my ganking, I use uh, 120 charges in the catalyst. Uh, but that depends on your skills, obviously. 120. Uh, if you're using a Tech 1 fit, which I'm assuming you are, uh, you will use Kaldari Navy Antimatter. Antimatter is the short range blaster ammo that has the highest damage. If you're using Tech 2 guns, you will be using Void. Higher damage. Lower tracking, doesn't matter. You're shooting big targets. That's the ammo of choice. For the Thrasher, it depends on the target's resist profile. You will want to EFT that. 
There's different types of projectile ammo. Uh, if you are a miner, you could prepare Concord 2 to stay in the belt. Yes. If you're mining, you can have an alt that simply shoots you every time Concord leaves your belt. And you will permanently have a Concord escort in your belt. That is possible, yes. If there is Concord on grid when the ganker attacks, they will instantly die to Concord. That is pretty much the highest amount of safety you can have, yes. You can intentionally quote unquote suicide gank yourself, simply shoot yourself once with a noob ship, and have that noob ship concorded. However, important, recycling trial accounts with negative security status is exploit, is an exploit. That means you will get banned for it. If you do that, it needs to be on a subscribed amount and you're not allowed to recycle these characters multiple times. So you're not allowed to, for example, gank with a character until your neck five security status, then biomass the character, create a new character, repeat. You're not allowed to do that. That's, that's, an, that's been declared an exploit and will get you banned. You're also not allowed to use trial accounts to recycle characters, which will get your linked main account banned. I wouldn't risk it. It doesn't matter too. I mean, if you want to protect yourself with a Concord squad, it doesn't matter if you alt neck 10. I mean, undock a noob ship warp to yourself, shoot yourself. It's the same thing the ganker does, essentially. It doesn't matter if you're an outlaw. You don't use a character for anything else, hopefully. Uh, did you say you load 120 units? Yes. Personally, my alt loads 120 units of antimatter or void. However much you want to load for the pet, Practical depends on how many charges you're going to use. Either use EFT to calculate it for you, or just load, let's say, 100 charges is a good ballpark number. We're in 0.6. You're not going to be shooting for 25 seconds. You're going to be shooting for 15 seconds. Uh, to continue, preparing Concord, you shoot something, get a criminal flag. And what you next do is, since you've already got the criminal flag for 15 minutes, criminal flag means any ship you undock, not your pod, any ship you undock will get concorded. That means you simply warp your pod to the next system you want to prepare, you dock at a station, get another noob ship, and undock that noob ship, and get concorded, and repeat that until your criminal timer expires. For example, I usually gank uh, near Heck in the knock guard ice belt. That's a cluster of 6.5 security systems right next to each other. One has an ice belt, all of them has, have asteroid belts, all but one have stations. And I can easily prepare those six systems within a single criminal timer, 15 minutes. That means six times undocking in a noob ship and dying to Concord and then returning to station and then actually commencing gank. And also, every time you do gank, Concord's obviously gonna be in the belt where you ganked. Since you're on criminal timer already, you dock at the station, get a noob ship, undock. Concord disappears from the belt. Simple. That's how you prepare Concord. Uh, also, question. Does it matter how far away Concord is in a system, or is it the same as long as it's off-grid? I have to admit, I've done testing on that, but it's been inconclusive. I can tell you for sure that it doesn't matter how far Concord is away from you, as long as it's not on the same grid. However, I believe that there is a very slight difference depending on the distance from the system center. Some testing has shown, I'm, I'm not stating this as a fact, but the tests seem to imply that there is between a uh, one and three second difference depending on how far the belt is from the sun. I haven't been able to confirm that though. It's possible. It would need, uh, I'd need to run some more tests on that on CC. That is the test server. I'm not actually sure. But for all intents and purposes, the 25 seconds is your ballpark figure. I've never seen a gank where you can shoot more than 25 seconds. I have seen ganks where you can shoot slightly less than 25 seconds. What if Concord is on the other side of the grid? It's still faster than a warp. 
Concord response range, as far as I'm aware, is 150 kilometers thereabouts. It varies. It can be slightly more, it can be slightly less. Uh, but approximately 150 to 200 kilometers is Concord response range. If they're within that range, they will still instantly kill the aggressor. If they're further away, all usual prepared Concord rules apply. Like I said earlier, it's not actually a warp. Concord will instantly poof disappear from space and then poof reappear to kill you. Uh, once we're done with the practical, uh, I guess I can suicide an alt somewhere so you can see what happens to the Concord squads. They poof, well, one of them is gonna uh, simply disappear from space. Uh, okay, next up, bookmarks, bookmarks, bookmarks. Your alt is going to be an outlaw, e.g. aggressible by anyone. And there's, well, uh, if you kill people, people tend to not like dying. And they tend to get angry at you. And that means they tend to try to kill you. Of course, uh, sadly, in quotes, most people don't know how to kill you. That means they're probably going to sit on the station undock in their fanciest missioning battleship, feeling super awesome. But even a fancy mission battleship can probably lock you if you simply undock and try to warp where we're going to go. Especially if, for example, it's behind the station, you bump against the station, that's not worth the risk. What you do is the same thing you do in DOSEC at NOLSEC, and at Leibold if you fight there, uh, you make undocking bookmarks. An undocking bookmark. I'm not going to go in depth on this one. It's uh, part of the bookmarking class, I believe. An undock bookmark essentially is a bookmark in line with the station undock. That means you can instantly warp to it once you undock from the station without anybody being able to shoot you. You want multiple of those at varying ranges, and you want to always warp at range to make it hard to determine the location of the undock bookmark. This might sound slightly paranoid, and I have to admit I've never actually had it happen that somebody tries to determine the location of my undocks, but it's better safe than sorry. As is always in EVE, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Of course, this, this entire class is based on better safe than sorry. You can undock a retriever and get lucky and never see a suicide ganker in multiple months. It's not likely that you're not going to see a suicide gecko there, and it's rather likely that you're going to blow up at some point. It's possible that you don't get blown up. If you want to bet on that, be my guest. I'll probably kill you if I see you. So, multiple undark bookmarks at varying ranges. Remember to warp at range to them. And then from there, go where you want to go. Either go through the gate, go to the belt if it's in system, etc. If you want to be extra paranoid, have a further away bookmark than the other ones that you uh, never use. That way, if you land at a bookmark and there's somebody waiting for you, you can simply warp to the emergency bookmark instantly again because you're still at warp speed. And you can simply continue the warp and escape that way. I personally don't have one of those. It's just an experiment that is... Uh, how much have you collected in protection payments? I'm my ganker is not actually uh, my ganker is not actually a member of the new order. I do not gank for profit. Instead, I send to people that I have ganked a mail explaining why they got ganked and how they can protect themselves against being ganked. I'm not part of the new order, and thus I haven't collected any protection payments. Sorry. Uh, Rand and Quinn asks, is your average Thrasher fit suicide ganker gonna bother with a Mackinac? That depends on the Mackinac. Typically, if you omni-tank your ship, the typical ganker is gonna use a catalyst. That means... That means that... Uh, they're gonna bother with Mackinac, yes. If you're not tanked, I'm going to bother with Mackinac. It's 200 million is, and it costs me a tech 2 catalyst. A single catalyst can kill your Mackinac, yes. 
especially two catalysts, Kelly Macklin. Uh, Camellia and Dolores unanimously ask if that's the Gavdon Goblin approach to ganking. Admittedly, yes. He got me on the idea, but I have to admit that um, I'll put it this way, I don't quite have Gavlon's attitude as far as that's concerned. Uh, but I got the idea from him, and my alt is a member of his corp, yes. Or his ex-corp, since he stopped the project. I'm still going. But yes, I got the idea from him. Admittedly. Uh, Luna says, my other gangs haven't been from New Order members, but still gave me the New Order spiel. Uh, I'd say that's because the New Order is obviously, as you can see from people asking about it, known in high sec, and most suicide gankers like to get reactions from their targets. Doing the whole New Order spiel with, you know, protector of high sec and all those fallacies, those beautiful, beautiful fallacies that are easy to re refute and tempting to refute gets reactions from you. That's what they want. That's why they give you that spiel, yeah. I have no reason to believe the New Order's protection is more than a scam. To be honest, I'm not going to argue about the New Order's methods here. I'm not a member of the New Order. I can't tell you anything about how they work. If I were a member of New Order, I still wouldn't kill you, I wouldn't tell you. Because, call it honor or whatever, I don't know if it's actually a scam or not. I know that their gangs are real. I know that they probably can't kill you if you fly a properly tanked barge, especially procurers and skiffs. Unless you personally piss them off. In which case, they might kill you. They have the means to kill you, yes, but they probably won't bother. About whether or not it's a scam, I can't say. I know that the donations to the New Order are real. They've actually gathered 160 or whatever it is billion is in donations over a year. About the protection thing, I have no idea. Sorry. Now, uh, back to the lecture, uh, what I skipped earlier is Five-step method of committing a suicide gang. The simplified steps, of course. Step one is scout your target. That means you want to find out what your target is flying and get a warp in for the ganking character. The ganker, ganker is an outlaw, so they can't just warp to the belt and slow boat to the target because factor police is going to kill them. They need some way to warp right to the target. Now. Uh, for mission runner gankers and industrial gankers, that's fairly easy. Because it's not really conspicuous if you sit in a noob ship at the undock of, say, Jita. Passive target and scan any industrial that comes out. It's not really suspicious. Minor gankers have it harder in that regard, because their targets tend to sit still. And a non-mining ship coming into belt is, well, uncommon. So there's two options here. One is what I use, which is why I have an alt that we're going to kill for the practical, is uh, I fit a procurer, and I use that to scout. Since, well, procurer is a common site in mining belts, and they don't know that I'm targeting them because passive target. And then I just move the procurer close and warp to the procurer. That's scouting your target. The other option is, yes, before any, anybody asks, uh, Gavlon does that. Use a cloaky that uh, can obscure which target you're hitting. The difference is that a procurer is superior when you're hitting somebody that isn't expecting a gank, that isn't prepared, or isn't suspicious already. If they're not suspicious already, a cloaky tech 3 landing in the belt and cloaking up is going to be more suspicious than simply mining barge. However, if there's somebody in the belt that knows that you're going to gank, and they know who your procurer pilot is, that then the procurer is a telltale sign of who you're going to gank because it's sitting right next to them. 
The Tengu is cloaked. You can't know where it is. That means they can't know who you're giving the warp pin on. Step two, warp to the target. Obviously, if you're using Procura, warp at zero. If you're using Tengu, likely warp at range. Effectively warp your ganker in a way that it lands on the target. Step three, simple. Kill your target. It's pretty obvious. Lock as soon as possible. Keep it arranged that means your guns do maximum damage. If you're mission or ganking, you probably want to sit still in a tornado, because tracking. Uh, kill your target. If you're not in an alpha ship, overheat your guns. Because, well, your ship's gonna die anyway. If your guns slightly take heat damage, it doesn't matter. It's free damage. Uh, overheat your guns. You can pre-overheat modules. Modules don't actually take heat damage before they get used. So you can overheat your guns while warping, and then start shooting once you land without actually having to click the overheat button. Step four is ironically the same thing that the miner does, or the target does, getting your pod out. Same thing as with the miner, or the target, select something you can warp to, spam warp to, or use the autopilot if you want. And that's essentially the same thing that the target can do to save their pod, is you want to save your pod, just in case anybody tries to kill you. Step five is redoc. Note that 60 seconds after shooting something, you cannot dock or jump. That means you want to bounce back forth, back forth between planets until your aggression timer is up. You can see the current status in the top left corner. You'll see that in practical if you participate. Or you'll see it if you shoot anything that's a player ever. And then you want to redock. Now the issue here is, uh, as you might know, some stations have a rather large model and a th small docking ring, which means if you warp to them, simply, you will land outside of docking range and have to approach the station first. If you're in a pod, that's a perfect opportunity for somebody to kill you. You don't want that. Use redock bookmarks. A redock bookmark is a bookmark as close to the station's center as possible. Typically, undock from the station and double click behind you. Most stations have like this launching ramp thing Turn around and fly inside the station as far as possible. Then make a bookmark and warp to that bookmark. Difference is you don't actually click dock, which means you don't auto dock the way you do when you warp to a station and dock. For this is where the autopilot actually shines. If you set destination to the station and activate the autopilot, the autopilot will instantly dock as soon as you exit warp. That's pretty much the fastest way you can dock up. Now, uh, fits. Again, ganking fits. Uh, first one's the pretty standard Tech 2 issue catalyst. Now, contrast with the mining fits, the ganking fits will all have implants enabled. For the catalyst, the implants are actually required. You need the weapon upgrades 3% implant plus the generalutions, or you can't actually fit that fit, even at maximum skills. Uh, I'm using 3% implants because 6% are kind of expensive if you do mess up. So it's slightly, it's possible to slightly increase that DPS. I think it gets like 740 DPS if you use 6% implants. This one has the 3% implants and you, gets you 728 DPS for the price of 10 million ISK. Essentially, this is the same for every ganking ship. It'll have a full rack of guns. It'll have a full rack of damage mods. It'll have cheap damage rigs, and it'll have a scram and a SIBO, or multiple SIBOs. The SIBO is not for actually locking the ship, but for locking the pod. Because after the ship dies, you want to lock the pod and kill the pod as fast as possible before Concord kills you. Uh, next up is the cheaper variant, the Meta 3 Catalyst. Obviously, it uses Meta 3 guns and Meta 3 weapon upgrades. That's why it's called the Meta 3 Catalyst. <laughs> It gets 566 DPS at all five skills and the same implants as before, and only costs slightly above 5, bill, uh, 5 million ISK. That's half the price for 75% of the DPS approximately. That's what you use if you are hitting a target you know you can kill with it. For example, an uh, untanked retriever dies to that. Uh, 
there's also obviously the far cheaper Tech One variant, which only costs about two hundred million, uh, two, two million. What's with me at hundred? Two million. That's what you use if you actually gank in the fleet. That still gets you about four hundred DPS, give or take a few, and it's far cheaper. You're not gonna kill anything solo with that. I think you don't even kill untanked cover with that. Uh, but if you're in a fleet, it's by far the most efficient way to get damage. Next up are Thrashers. Thrashers do less damage than Catalyst, period. However, projectile weapons have the advantage of selectable ammo type. And by extension, selectable damage type. That means if your target thinks themselves smart and tanks exclusively against kinetic and thermal damage. Uh, question by Kitar and Silkia. As Concord won't blow your pod and you use a miner's scout, can't you abandon the dropped cargo slash wreck of the target and then pick it up without the suspect flag? No. Because if your aggression is illegal, e.g. your suicide ganking, the wreck of the target will not belong to you, but it will belong to the miner that died or the target that died. That means you as a ganker cannot abandon the wreck since it belongs to your target. So you need to incur a suspect flag if you loot it. Uh, continuing on the uh, on the Thrasher. The difference is a Thrasher can only fit two damage modules because it has two low slots. The Thrasher can fit seven guns, but it has a missile launcher slot. So I put a rocket launcher in the fit to get some extra DPS. Belinda Huafang says, you mentioned using autopilot being the fastest way of docking up, but in my experience, you will still slow boat compared to using an insta-dock bookmark. You might have something confused there. I'm not advocating that you use the autopilot to warp to the station. I'm saying you should warp to the insta-dock bookmark manually and then activate the autopilot. That means you will be in warp and land at the bookmark, and then the autopilot activates and docks you. Obviously, if you simply activate the autopilot without warping, it will warp at 15 kilometers. It's not a good idea. Uh, the Thrasher has three mid slots, which means it can fit double SIBOs, which means it locks a pod in two seconds, as opposed to three seconds. Can help. Something to note. Also, yes, it has lower DPS. A full tech to uh, Thrasher gets you the same DPS as a Meta 3 Catalyst for 4 million more ISK. However, it gets the selectable damage type, which means the Thrasher is the ship of choice if your target selectively tanks against Catalysts. Catalysts can only deal kinetic and thermal damage. That means if, you're, if your target stacks kinetic and thermal hardeners and rigs, you can maybe kill it with the Thrasher. Also, on the next slide, you'll have the Artillery Thrasher. This is what people use to kill pods and shuttles that are autopiloted. This one can, for example, lock a shuttle, pop it with four guns, lock the pod, pop it with the others. That's what it does. That's what it's good at. It can also pop lightly tanked frigates that have high value cargo. Obviously, it can also easily pop autopiloting pods on gates, stuff like that. For example, if you're a older character and you autopilot with your pod, don't feel safe. You're autopiloting your pod and you're an older player, which means you're highly likely to have implants. Somebody might just kill you. Uh, that's what this one is for. It doesn't have much alpha, it has more alpha than the catalyst, obviously. So it's used for squishy targets, or en masse to kill some other stuff. Industrials, for example. A bunch of army thrashers. Same deal as before, but it doesn't need a scram. It needs the genolutions, again, to fit the RDs. RDs take a lot of power grid. It cannot fit two damage rigs, sadly because that would uh, require too much power grid. And it doesn't need a scrap, because it doesn't need to point its target. It's going to die in one shot, obviously. It also has the two damage mods. It has the 3% implants, and it gets the 1.9 thousand uh, alpha that I had on the damage slide. Now, after that, we come into Tech 3 Battle Cruiser or Tier 3 Battle Cruiser, or Attack Battle Cruiser, as they're called these days, territory. 
a tier three battlecruisers or attack battlecruisers are battlecruisers that can use battleship sized guns. That means they're very squishy for a battlecruiser, but they do a lot of damage. Now, on the next slide, you see a Talos, which is a Galente battlecruiser that can fit hybrids. Same as a Catalyst, essentially, just larger and more expensive. A Talos with Tech 2 large blasters gets you 1.6 thousand DPS heated. It needs a tracking computer because large blasters have noticeably less tracking by a lot. It needs a scan res just to lock the target reasonably. It cannot ever get pods because it's a Talos. It's way too slow at locking. It has a web to slow targets down because, as opposed to a catalyst, if you're getting yanked by a Talos, even in a mining barge orbiting, is going to reduce its damage noticeably. It's a large blaster is using void, which is very low tracking compared to the catalyst. Even in a mining barge, if you get a bit of transversal, you can probably still negate a lot of damage, which is why this one has a web. Also, surprisingly, it has a damage control. At least surprisingly at first glance. The importance of the damage control is, first off, a fifth max stab would do hardly anything because of stacking penalties. Fifth module is almost worthless. Also, a damage control increases your effective hit points enough that you can use this ship to kill targets on stations and gates. You can actually take tank gate guns for almost 25 seconds with this one. Meaning you can actually kill stuff on gates with a Talos. Apart from that, well, it's got the implants. It uses the large hybrid turret implant instead of small hybrid turret implant, obviously. It doesn't need general illusions because it doesn't need as much grid. It has guns, it has, yeah, rigs, obviously. It costs 110 million years at current prices. Noticeably more than a catalyst for slightly more BPS. Next up is the king of Alpha, the Tornado. This one uses 1,400 millimeter howitzer artillery. That's the largest kind of artillery you can fit, unless I'm mistaken and making a complete fool of myself here. Uh, double damage rigs, obviously. You don't care about cycle time. You have two SIBOs because you want to lock staff as fast as possible. Five tornadoes sitting behind a station is slightly obvious, so you might want to lock the target rather fast. Tracking computers, because artilleries have horrible tracking, a target painter to make smaller targets easier to hit, such as the Tengu I mentioned way back. Three gyro stabilizers for more damage. A reactor control unit so you can actually fit the guns. And, well, the damage rigs. I already mentioned that one. Also, of note for this EFT screenshot, I used Quake Ammo, which is the high damage artillery tech 2 ammo. It, however, has a set damage type. You can instead use EMP or fusion or phase plasma for the different damage types. The alpha is, decrease is very little. You lose about 400 points of alpha. You still do above 12k alpha, even with that. OK, that's all the slides that I have prepared. Well, that means we're actually done with the lecture part, and I took way longer than I had anticipated. So sorry about that if you were on time with this one. Uh, now, what we're going to do now is Quickly, I'd like everybody that is going to participate in the practical or would like to participate in the practical to please X up with their fit in lecture.euni. The purpose of that being that I'd like my alt to not instantly die, but also maybe die because I want you guys to actually kill something. So I'd like an estimate of how many people are actually going to be participating in the practical. After that, after that, I'm going to open Mumble for uh, the Q&A while I prepare my alt to die horribly. And uh, once my alt gets in position and we're done with the Q&A, we'll do the practical. Once again, I'm going to note uh, the practical is going to give you a slight decrease in security status. Not going to be much. Not going to get you in any trouble if you're in positive. Slightly going to push you below zero if you're a negative, but it's hardly going to matter. Okay, uh, now let me see if I can actually manage to unmute everybody at once. 
I can't unmute everybody at once. Okay. Uh, in that case, I think uh, we'll just take questions in lecture.euni. Uh, can I join as spectator? Yes, sure. Once I get set up, I'll pull you in fleet with my alt, and you can just watch. Uh, for now, it's Q&A time, which means that any questions you still have are now hopefully going to be answered as much as I can. And if I can't, I'm going to tell you that. So uh, ask away if you have any questions. Also, uh, if you're leaving the class already, I should probably put this here. Uh, the class uh, class announcement thread can also be used as a class feedback thread. So if you have any sort of feedback that you would like to make public, there's where you want to put it. If you recorded the class, there is where you put your uploaded recordings. If you have anything else you'd like to say about the class, put it there if you want it to be public. If you don't want it to be public for some reason, uh, you can email me. You can go complain to the directors if I somehow offended you, for which I'm sorry if I did, and I hopefully did. Okay, uh, questions. There we go. My minor friends have chatted to me about using shield transfers from an orca or a scorpion and dis dissuading gangs. Any comments on when you would still have engaged such a target and what it would require? Do you trust your minor friends with the safety of your scorpion and or orca is the question we're talking about here. The problem being, if your minor friends do not re-aggress, meaning they actually manage to not have the drones aggressive, they can get repped and the ganker can't do anything about it. However, you need to be, make sure that you have them pre-locked because locking in an orca takes ages. Also, large shield transfers have a very small range if you're not bonus. That means that an orca or a scorpion, you need your ship to be close. And if you're close to an orca, you can just store the ship in the orca. It's far safer. Apart from that, if your friends do re-aggress by mistake and you have your safety to yellow, your orca will interfere in a limited engagement and go suspect for 15 minutes. I can personally guarantee you that any ganker will probably have a character somewhere that can point and kill that orca because it's suspect. It might not be a good idea. If you can, yeah, it's, it's an option. Shield transfer is an option, but you still have to somehow tank your ships slightly. I mean, if you don't tank your ships, the shield's simply going to be gone almost instantly. Uh, as far as I, what I'm going to engage, if it's within shield transfer range of an orca, it's going to be within storage range of an orca. I'm not going to engage that. If there's a scorpion on grid, I'm also not going to engage that because the scorpion's an ACM bird. That's its primary role, it's jamming stuff. If there's a scorpion on grid solo, I'm not going to engage that. In a fleet, I'm going to engage it, probably. In a fleet, ECM isn't as effective. Uh, shield transfers in high, yeah, if you make sure that you're within range of the stuff you're trying to repair, and you make sure that the stuff you're trying to repair isn't going to counter regress. Yes, shield transfers are an option. A uh, question by Camellia again. How long does it take to scale a T2 ganking alt? Do you want very good skills or perfect skills? My ganking alt has very good skills. She gets 714 out of 728 DPS out of the catalyst. And she trained for two months. If you want perfect gunnery skills, which is what, you, what gets you to 728, you will be training for three months. That's, for example, small hybrid blasters five. Uh, that's stuff like surgical strike five. That's simply rather high rank trains to five. Dolores Herbert asks, what is the best way to raise negative security status? There's multiple options here. If you're able to rat in nullsec, nullsec ratting will raise your security status. Also, uh, I think killing mission rats also increases the security status. Some PVE uh, activities raise the security status. Also, yes, as was just mentioned, low sec tags, clone soldier tags that are dropped in low sec, can be turned into Concord to increase security status. 
if you're doing some sort of ganking that, uh, yes, only for negative security status. If you're doing some sort of ganking that requires you to rarely shoot stuff, that means, uh, for example, mission runner ganking, where you rarely shoot high value targets. For that kind of engagements, sex status tags are a very cheap way to keep your alt below outlaw. I should have probably clarified that more during the lecture. Operating at neg 10 is something that you do if you frequently engage targets. Minor gankers, industrial gankers to some degree, especially if they operate solo. Pod gankers especially, since pod uh, killing gives an enormous decrease in security status. Uh, for mission runner gankers and freighter gankers, security status tags are a great way to keep their security status up and they're very affordable. If you're not NEC5, running incursions raises your status very fast. I can second that. Uh, note that NEC5 is not enough. You need to be above NEC2. If you're below NEC2, faction police is going to engage you in certain security statuses. You probably don't want that in any current battleship. So NEC2 is probably the lowest you can reasonably go. A running incursions with kill rights from ganking can be exciting, yes. Also of note, the incursions community of EVE University does not allow anybody with kill rights, and most public communities won't either. Uh, did I miss a question? I feel like I missed a question. Even killing rats in mining belts raises sex status slightly, yes. Any rat that gives a bounty, I believe, will give you security status. But the higher the bounty, the higher the sex status increase, so no sec is by far the fastest. 